So good morning everyone. I'm going to start making a video on my canopy, how I'm going to set it up. I've already uh, changed my mind about 10 times, so uh, this is the, the, the setup, the configuration I'm going to go with. I'm just going to make this video probably over, well, it's actually going to be a couple of months, but um, you know when you watch it it'll all come together in the end. Actually I'll go around this side, <coughs> just to start with. So, so far I've lined the back wall and the, the roof, the ceiling, if you want to call it that. I had some leftover sarking from a job I did around the house here, so I've used that. And then I put some foam in between the battens. So it's basically the same as spoil board. Just trying to use up uh, what I had left lying around. So that's okay. So I've lined that. I've lined the back wall. I've lined the, the top up there. So that sort of gives me something to fix to. And then like I've got all my electrical uh, work to go in there um, soon, next job sort of as we go. So I'll be getting some help with that. But uh, I just wanted to make a quick video at the moment, just sort of what I'm thinking. So far this is it. So I'm gonna have a microwave here. That's gonna be over there and a couple of uh, couple of those plastic container drawers. I'll make a, uh, there'll be a little cubby hole in there sort of thing. The fridge. So I only found this out actually the other day, sort of, it's probably a pretty common thing, but um, to get the shelves out, you gotta have the door all the way back. So I sort of didn't think of that when I was originally um, setting this up. I was gonna have the fridge back here but because of this strut I've got the door only opened to there and that was fine I was happy with that but then I realized that I can't change the shelves so that's no good so I've had to move the fridge over and then I'll make the, uh, the slide out pantry to suit that gap there with a bit of uh, electrical stuff on this side so it's sort of it's all up here so stick with me it'll It'll come together in the end. Um, I've got a table up here, just a light, cheapo table for, uh, you know, putting the cooker on and whatnot. So I'm going to make a little hole for that. So I'm gonna, just going to try and use as much space as I can. I don't want any wasted space, so to speak. And that's about it. So I'll just make these videos sort of as I go and then, you know, join them all together. Hopefully it won't be too complicated to understand. So I'm just going to make a quick update video on uh, how the progress has been going with the canopy fit out. At the moment, I'm just uh, putting some carpet on my pantry. That's going to go like that. There's a slight angle there, which I had to do because of the, uh, the gas strut for the door, but I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Anyway, it's coming along nicely. Um, just sticking this carpet on. I started off using the um, the Shelly's Quick Grip, which is uh, great stuff, very, very smelly stuff, but uh, gotta have a mask on. Uh, you put it on both sides, let it dry, let it go tacky, and then uh, stick them together, and it, uh, it sticks wonderful. Anyway, that ran out, so I've decided to give this artificial grass adhesive a go. It's um, a bit cheaper, but it's just as good, same sort of principle. And um, I don't know, it just seems to just seems to go a bit further, that stuff. So anyway, so I've changed my mind so many times on this, and uh, because I can't quite remember when I made the last video, because this has taken me quite a few months, I'm just uh, just doing it over the weekends when I've got some time in between, you know, kids and four wheel driving, etc. Anyway, this is sort of how I've come up with. Uh, my design. I just tried to use every piece of space available. Um, still got a lot to do, as you can see, but I've got a spot up here for the umbrella, a couple of drawers, a couple of hidey holes. I've got to neaten all this up yet. Let's see if I can pull this open with one hand. There we go. Slide out table there. Just got to pull that off there. But I've got to do all the wiring still. Um, I'm going to get some help with that. Now, I'm going to attempt to make my own uh, tilt 
fridge slide because I've got a um, I've got a chest freezer there because we're a family of five we're gonna need a bit of tucker when we go away kids are eating more and more so I'm gonna use this fridge as my freezer I just bought a, a cheap Kings slide for 90 bucks and I think I've got it nutted out but I'll, I'll make a separate video on that see how it turns out it's gonna be pretty simple a couple of hinges anyway that'll come together so I've got some more electrical stuff to go over here I've got the inverter um, a few switches plugs whatnot and then this side will be just for storage for uh, you know our clothes and whatnot so still got to put a wall in there and vent and carpet all that so it's still a work in progress but I'll, I'll make another video as we get closer so I'm just going to keep going get some more carpet laid down and we'll see how it turns out so good morning everybody so a bit of an update it's uh, it's finally come to that time where I can start doing my dual battery system I don't know much about uh, dual battery systems or 12 volts just not my thing so I'm going to uh, get a lot of help from my mate Peter and he's going to uh, pretty much do this for me and I'm going to give him a hand. So anyway, I've worked out what I'm going to do uh, with Peter's help and we are going with the DCS 290 amp hour lithium batteries under the bonnet. Uh, it's a specific kit that suits the Land Cruiser. I rang up uh, the nice people there and had a chat to them and uh, they've advised me this is the kit to go for. We're gonna get that in and do a little bit of other wiring and that's sort of gonna be stage one and then stage two is um, sort of wiring out the canopy, getting the fridge done. Well, I've got two fridges actually and a microwave and uh, lights and all sorts of things. But uh, today we're just going to get this in and uh, we'll just go through what we're doing. So we've got the batteries in, um, we're just sort of working out our wiring now. So it's all nice and neat, try not to be uh, too much of a bird's nest in here. Just trying to work out where we're going to run all our cables, which direction. Pete's just making a few up, so it's... It's all, uh, it's all going well. Done. <laughs> what is this? This is a hydraulic. Yeah, hydraulic crimper. Hydraulic crimper. That's cool. Yeah. So you just get the yeah, you just get the terminals, put them in, crimp it, and it swages the end on. Gives you a nice, nice, good fit. Mm. And then a bit of heat shrink over to make it look like it like a proper done, job. Like a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good afternoon everybody. I thought I'd do a video on my um, my dual battery setup and uh, canopy setup. It's been a bit busy lately. We uh, we just got back from uh, five days in the high country, so car's a bit dirty. But anyway, we're not here to look at that. So I'll do my best to uh, try and explain this. I am in no way a 12 volt person. I had a lot of help with this. Uh, my mate Peter came round. Uh, he's quite a knowledgeable fella. And uh, he basically did it for me. I was just doing whatever, you know, he told me to do, hold this, hold that. So anyway, I'll, um, I'll try and explain it as best I can. Don't grill me too hard if I uh, make a mistake or get something wrong. <clears throat> but anyway, I'll try and explain it. So I've got two 90 amp hour lithium batteries here from DCS uh, under the bonnet. That one's the crank battery and that's for all the uh, auxiliary stuff in the canopy. These have a built in solar input which is just there. This is the cord that comes with it. That just plugs in there and your solar blanket plugs in there to the Anderson plug <coughs> directly straight in got a breaker here uh, and that turns the power on 
to the back of the canopy. So at the moment it's off because we've just got everything off. And also, while I'm here, I'll just show you. It's all Bluetooth to monitor your battery. So you just turn the Bluetooth on your phone. So there we go. State of charge, I don't know if you can see that, 99%. 13.47 volts um, now nothing's going out so that's why it's zero zero time remaining is uh, that's the infinity symbol because it's nothing's happening at the moment uh, batteries are 21 degrees and it's done two cycle counts so obviously when you you turn some appliances on in the canopy this uh, counts sort of down or backwards to reflect how much time remaining you've got so that's handy on this side the driver's side this is where I have um, all sort of my electrical side of things so in the back here the power comes from the battery up to this little unit here now this little unit here is a Victron smart battery protect and that protects the batteries from being drawn down too much from all the appliances here in the back so that'll leave me enough charge in the batteries to be able to start the car so that's what that's for and there's a little little display there which you can program uh, it does have a factory preset and that's what it is at the moment but you can set it differently according to you know what appliances you have in the back and what not anyway i'm just going to leave that as is now i've got a king's 1500 watt inverter i'm a pretty basic camper and i reckon you know if stuff works it works you know you don't need to spend a fortune to uh to go camping it's not really a competition in my eyes but each to their own you know um if something works it works and so far it's been working so i'm happy with it so i've got the inverter uh, just because I've got a microwave on the other side, which we'll go around in a minute. Just got a couple of uh, 240 outlets here. This one goes to the microwave. This is for the, the fridge here beside me, and that's for the other fridge on the other side. And then I've got two, these are 50 amp Anderson plugs uh, with the correct wiring in the back, just for um, bigger current draw appliances, you know, if I need it, like a pie oven or a a compressor or something like that but at the moment I'm, I'm not using them and that has a another 50 amp breaker there just to protect the wire so got a couple of lights and uh, two Siggy lighters there got the white light up here there's no power in here at the moment so uh, I've got the white light and the, the amber light just for the bugs had it on at camp um, yeah, it was nice. I don't know if it was working or not, but it was all good. I've also got a fridge slide here. I'll just step back here, which I made. Because we've got, we're a family of five, we've got three young kids, don't stop eating. Um, I thought I'm going to use my, my other fridge. Now, I bought this fridge specifically to go in the back of the Jeep, only because it was one that was just about spot on um, dimension-wise. It was sort of short. But tall and it just fitted in the back of the Jeep perfect so I can sort of mix and match as I as I please you know depending on what car I'm taking or where I'm going how long I'm going for all that sort of thing but anyway I thought I'd use it as well so I just bought um, just a cheapo King slide you know 90 bucks uh, that's attached to a piece of MDF just pull it out there's nothing in it at the moment and up it goes I was just sort of trying to work out how I can make a tilt slide fairly easy and I was having a look around the shed here and I had an old uh, shock absorber left over when I did the Jeep because uh, the Jeep's had a couple of lift kits in it so that was out of the two inch lift I had and it just fits in perfectly so I've just used a bit of square angle there cut it out top and bottom bolt through it just screwed to the top it's pretty solid up here there's some uh, you know some internal cross members there for the, the canopy so you just push down 
it comes down nice and slow it is a little bit faster when there's uh the fridge is full just a couple of rubber feet there and uh because of the weight of the fridge when it's full and the pressure of the shock uh, i don't need a locking mechanism so it's just uh in and out just like that so that was uh that worked out well and uh when i close the door the actual original fridge handles we just uh had a bit of a clearance issue up here so i had to uh just sort of make some attachment points just out of some uh, aluminium there so it misses so you know i've got a good half an inch now when that comes down it just misses so it's just a couple of hinges and a bit of aluminium angle it's just attached to the, the bottom there so i'll just show you the fridge slide just comes out push down it is empty at the moment so with a little bit more weight in there it does work quite well actually and it's a little bit faster but that's it there just sits there like that and i can just on my tippy toes grab everything uh, it's just uh just perfect actually it worked out quite well so that was uh very handy in the high country and uh you know we hit the tracks it's pretty hard and it's didn't move so just push it in and it goes down by itself easy as that okay so around this side i've actually turned the light on it's a bit dark i've just got a basic switch panel here just the first ones for the, the white light that's the amber Siggy and a couple of USBs and another 240 volt uh, household outlet there. So I just backed the uh, cruiser out of the shed. It was a bit dark in there, just so uh, you can see this side a bit better. Now I've just tried to make use of all the the space. Got like a little pigeonhole up there. That's for my um, table. That's just a you know like a torno cover bungee cord thing that's just a, a nice light table there it just folds out a couple of plastic drawers there and these are these are good they come right out and you can take them inside and pack them and bring them back outside plus you can see what's inside another couple of little pigeon holes there and uh here's the microwave just a sort of 48 dollar big w one it was the uh, the smallest one we could find actually and it it only draws about 450 watts through the inverter uh, so that's good doesn't use much at all <coughs> just got a bit of stainless there i just uh, had knocking around in the shed and uh put a couple of slides on it and a handle so that's good something's comes out of the microwave hot you can just sit it on there and you know it's not going to wreck the top or anything that just slides in there uh, the pantry now i just used um some ply i had knocking around in the shed it wasn't, wasn't anything flash and uh just carpeted it. got a bit of bungee cord here just to stop the stuff falling out now i don't know if you can see that but this is on a bit of an angle here just to miss the strut for the canopy door so just trying to use up every bit of space and not waste any so that's good i um i think i ended up making that pantry about three times um because i initially wanted it here instead in the fridge over this side still basically above the axle so that sits there so it just works out well actually that's my setup so i've just got these black crates in here now i had these knocking around in the shed don't ask me where i got them i've just they've just been in there collecting dust but they uh they just fit in there perfect and they stop all our stuff 
moving around. I've just got it set on three. That seems to work. We, uh, we had it set on three, you know, when we went to the high country for, for about five days and uh, not a problem. Kept everything nice and cold. So that's my setup. It's, um, it seems to work for us. I'm um, just trying to keep the weight down as much as possible. You know how it adds up. It uh, doesn't take much. So that's why I've just got these plastic drawers. It um, was easier than making them. And, uh, and they're nice and light. And they're, you know, if something happens, you can just uh, go down and replace them. I've just got these two rubber stoppers up here, which stop the, the door opening when it's closed. So, you know, nothing moves. Nothing falls out. I finally finished my canopy. Uh, it's been a bit of a long video. It's taken me about six months and I've just sort of been filming whenever I've done something. Um, sorry about that. Sorry it's taken so long, but uh, I'm finally finished. So I'll just quickly explain what I've done on this side. I've built a drawer. This time I just wanted a drawer uh, to put a few more things in and um i just made that out of some ply i bought the runners from bunnings and uh the carpet and handles from bunnings and uh i've put this divider up here so it's just um it's just a bit of plastic just uh sprayed it black because this is where our bags are going to go uh because i don't want them outside you know we've got three kids in the back so there's no room there so the bags will go in there. The chest fridge will go here. So here's the drawer. And I've just made it big enough to uh, put some of these, these gas bottles in. There's just a little divider there. And I just got a bit of a gap down there for the umbrella and the stool. So that's done. Happy with that. And then on this side, all I've done I bought this seat organizer. It's 12 bucks, 12 dollars from Kings, uh, and it just fits perfectly on there. Still open it, no worries. Just uh, a couple of little holes there. You know, if I don't like it, I can always take it off. That'll be very handy. I just put a few little things in there, and um, it just helps with the the packing and organization of things. Anyway, that's it. So finally done. And uh, yeah, it's taken a while, but it was good fun. Good fun to do once. Okay, thanks for watching.